it just looks like this oasis, like this exotic vacation that you're taking where you can listen to incredible music in the jungle and it's like hot and sweaty and sexy. Like it looks sick. Hey there. Welcome to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals and more hosted by me, Emma Capotis. Each week I'll be covering everything from dance music culture, industry news, trending topics and festival tips, advice and reviews. You can also expect to hear stories from ravers, artists, business owners and more. Tune in every Wednesday for your weekly dose of peace, love, unity and respect. Hey guys, welcome back to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. How are we all feeling, fam? I hope you're all having an incredible week so far. Uh, We're already in the second week of January, and to be honest with you, we've had some high moments and some low moments already, a lot of stress, but today we are in such a good energy. I'm feeling really, really excited about this topic today. I was working on it all last night, so yeah, I kind of want to dive right into things and get started, but I hope you're all doing well. Um, I figured we have a lot of guests coming up in the next few episodes, so this one was kind of like a very last minute idea, but I was starting to think about, you know, the months looking forward and festival planning and, you know, what what am I going to be doing? Where am I going to be spending my money? Like, what trips are we going to make happen this year? So I figured it would be a really good time just with the second episode of the year to just talk about festival schedules and planning and, you know, try to help you guys figure out what would be worth your time and money. Because I I work with this company called Festival Insider. I run their socials and I've been doing a lot of research lately on festivals. So I've been discovering so many new ones, a lot of them outside of the United States. And I was just like, you know what? I feel like sometimes if you're like me, you get stuck in a rut where you do a lot of the same festivals over and over again or you're just like not expanding your horizons as much so since we're in January I figured let's just build out like this would be my dream festival schedule essentially if I had no budget no limitations like unlimited paid time off so I'm gonna go month by month and I'm gonna give you about like I would say like two to four recommendations per month of festivals like I currently have on my radar that I do think you guys would really enjoy as my audience. So it's going to be a full episode just talking about festivals. So definitely like take notes, write these down, look these up, put them on your radar. Um, There's some really incredible ones. So I just hope you learn something new and maybe add some new trips to, you know, your schedule this year that maybe you weren't planning on doing. But that's kind of what this is all about. Um... With that being said, you guys, if you are enjoying Rave Culture Cast, it would mean the world to me if you could rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, You can actually now throw a rating up on Spotify. I don't know how long that's been there, but I'm pretty sure it's new. So if you want to give the podcast a couple stars, that would be amazing. Uh, You can write a review on Apple. All of that helps people discover the podcast. Um, But most importantly, make this your Instagram stories, you know, you I'm talking to you it makes a difference make this your Instagram story share it up there tag at rave culture cast and I will always reshare you guys on the account Uh, and of course we have communities on Facebook discord and a new merch line so all that stuff will be down below in the show notes if you want to check any of that out Alrighty, with all that being said, I want to bring to you a quick message from today's sponsor, one of our partners, Rolita Couture. Uh, Rolita is one of my favorite ravewear brands. I absolutely love working with them. Rosa is an absolute gem, and I love the mission behind their company. Sexy has no size. There is something for everybody at Rolita. Uh, So they actually just launched their Circuit Daisy collection and their Rebelliously Sexy collection as well. Very different vibes, super cool patterns and styles, but they are launching a brand new collection this Thursday the 13th it's called the deja vu collection really cool patterns you guys can go on the site it's up there already uh funky graphic patterns bright colors a bunch of different styles they definitely kept in mind uh raves and festivals that are in winter so there are longer pants there are leggings guys keep that in mind 
Speaking of men, they are launching a men's line, which is so exciting. So there will be options for guys as well. Uh, 2022 is definitely going to be the year where men's rave fashion steps at the fuck up. So I'm super excited about that. But you can head over to RolitaCouture.com and use code Emma K for 15% off your orders. Guys, it saves you a lot of money. 15% off code Emma K over on Rolita Couture. Go show them some love and support. Check out the new Deja Vu collection. Uh, All of that will be linked down below in the show notes. All right, guys. So quickly, I'm going to do a new segment. So I know every week I usually do some sort of music recommendation. So whether it's a new track of the week or if it's a set recommendation, like I always try to bring you some new music. But the other day I found myself listening to this one song over and over again. And it's like, gosh, at this point, it's nine years old yeah it's nine years old it came out in 2013 so I figured I want to test out doing a new segment talking about oldies that are still goodies so this is an oldie but a goodie music segment so all of these tracks are going to be f- older not like old old but <laughs> they're like at least a couple years old that I still can't fucking get enough of and honestly We all get into raving at different stages. Maybe you just got into dance music. So you may never have heard of these songs as well, which would be even cooler. So I'm kicking things off with a song that I cannot stop fucking listening to lately, which is Reverse Skydiving by Hot Natured featuring Annabelle England. It is the Shadow Child remix. Again, Hot Natured and Annabelle England Shadow Child remix. Reverse Skydiving came out in 2013 such a groovy house song like very sexy it makes me think of like my earlier years raving and it was also used in one of the EDC trailers I don't remember which one but probably right around that time it must have been like 2014 I would say or 2015 which 2015 was the first EDC I went to so it was around there because I literally every time I hear I'm immediately brought back to EDC Vegas It's so incredibly good. I want to play a quick clip of it here so you guys can check it out. But we're going to add this to your playlist again and enjoy this oldie but a goodie. All right. With all of that being said, guys, let's just jump right in because I know I'm going to have a lot to say. I'm going to try to breeze through these because I have, I don't even know, I have almost like three festivals per month that I'm going to recommend to you. So I'm just going to be like drilling this shit out quickly. But we're going to do a month by month breakdown. Um, Again, keep in mind, you can't do all of these. <laughs> like there's too many. But I'm going to give you reasons why you should consider these and just some basic information, some dates, uh, the types of music you guys can hear there here at these festivals and all of that good stuff. Um, And then I'm going to also give just some some quick tips here on how to build out a festival schedule. If any of you guys are like struggling with that or you don't know what to pick. Um, And yeah, I hope you just expand your horizons with all of this. So for me personally, especially at this point point in my life um obviously this is work for me so traveling to festivals is something like I not only I want to do but like it's very important for my my job as well so I do want to like step out of my comfort zone I want to try some new things um bring you guys some more content so that you can see videos and reviews and all of these things so you know what the experiences are like that's my job so um personally I don't have too many on the radar this year only because I am getting married this year I am getting a puppy this year so I have a lot of life changes happening Um, so I'm not going to have as many on the calendar but I'm going to do my best personally the only ones I have right now before I dive into the month by month breakdown I am going to ultra Miami in March which I don't think I've talked about that yet but I'm going back to Bayfront baby (laughs) so excited for it um it is a very last minute send. Don't even have a ticket yet. Going to figure that out later. But uh, I have a place to stay and that's all that matters. And the lineup is incredible. And I wanted to go back um, despite, you know, how I feel about certain things with this festival and how like the last few years were handled. Um, I'm very curious to see how it is now that it's going back to Bayfront and the lineup's fucking awesome. So we're going to do that. I also have an Electric Forest ticket that's in June. And then I'm most likely going back to ARC Music Festival in September, which I'll talk about. And then most likely EDC Orlando in November. So the only like new one this year for me would be Electric Forest. But I'm choosing to space it out that way, not only financially, 
because it gives me enough time in between to save up for things like flights and hotels and all of that stuff. Um, For me, once a month is a little too much just with work. Like I have my own business. I'm a social media coach. Um, And again, like I said, with the life changes, it I did a lot of traveling this past year, September through November, and I found myself becoming really, really stressed out because I was so out of my routine so often. And I also tend to get sick after almost every festival. So it's just a lot on my body. And again, like financially, it was a lot this fall. So I like to spread them out and only pick maybe like four per year or something around those lines. So, you know, pick and choose. If you're going to do like a big trip that's like further, it's a lot more travel. You have to buy a flight, all that stuff. And maybe it's like outside the United States or it's outside of your country that you live in. Maybe pick a smaller one for the rest of the year or a local one. Like try and balance it out. So maybe pick like one really big one that you're going to splurge on. And then the other ones, you know, they're not like as expensive or as much of an investment. So with that being said, I want to start out with January. Now, obviously, we're already like we're not midway through January, but we're two weeks into January already. So it might be a little hard to, to plan these last minute. But for next year, the three that I would have on your radar Number one, I had Groove Cruise. Uh, I wanted to include a cruise ship festival in here because one, I've never done one, but it just seems like the most incredible experience because what could be more fucking fun than being on a cruise ship with all of the artists, with ravers, and you can just run the fuck around. And when you're tired, you just go back in your bunk, but you are sailing the seas. The parties go until any hour they literally never stop the groove cruise family i've heard incredible things about um they've been doing it for years and the lineup is also really good they have a lot of house they have some trance acts um they have some like og djs who have been playing the ship for years Uh, i believe it's a little bit of an older crowd as well which is really nice um and that leaves out of orlando i believe so um groove cruise is happening towards the end of january i'm not sure if it's sold out yet but That might be something you guys want to consider um, as far as cruise ships go. The other two are outside of the United States. So the first one is actually happening. I think it starts this weekend by the time this episode comes out. Uh, It's BPM Costa Rica. So this one I actually did just cover on Festival Insider. Um, I've known about BPM for a long time. But again, until the pandemic, I really wasn't thinking internationally yet. Like I still was doing a lot of the... American festival market like still was into all the insomniac events I still am but now that I'm getting older now that I'm in my 30s I really want to get out and try some other festivals BPM to me is just seems like a beautiful experience it's in the beach town of I believe it's pronounced Tamarindo Tamarindo Costa Rica so you have the beautiful beaches a lot of the stages are like built into like the natural environment there. So it's very eco-friendly. It just looks so beautiful. Like they have this dream catcher stage that looks fucking sick. I'll pop pop up pictures and videos throughout this um, episode if you guys are watching on YouTube. All house and techno. I think there's over like 200 artists on the lineup, which is insane. Um, It just looks really beautiful. Absolutely idyllic environment. Um, and I think it'd be a really beautiful experience. And the hotel accommodations, like all of that looks really, really cool. Um, so I think I would really enjoy BPM. You guys should definitely check it out. Uh, and the second one or the third one I had was Zamna, which is in Tulum, which is happening right now. It actually might be over at this point, but it's in early January. It's I think it started December 31st through like the 9th, I want to say about that. It's, I think it's about a week. Uh, It's in Tulum in Mexico. Again, very beautiful, natural environment. It's literally in the jungles of Tulum. So what could be like more exotic than that? Also, house and techno um, from all the videos I've seen, it just looks, it just looks like this oasis, like this exotic vacation that you're taking where you can listen to incredible music in the jungle and it's like hot and sweaty and sexy. Like it looks sick. Um, and a lot of like artists I love. I know John Summit's been posting like a ton of videos out there, but it looks really cool. And I don't know why I've been, I don't know why I've been sleeping on Tulum, guys. Do not be like me, okay? Get out there and travel. So those are the three I would have for January. Moving on to February. For February, it was a little slim pickings, guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. 
I did my research. I'm, I honestly might be missing some. So I apologize if you're like, Emma, you're an idiot. There's this big festival that happens in February. But um, from what I found, there were a couple pollen trips that were happening in February, which were kind of like some of the only ones I could find. Um, also, February is my birthday month. So usually I just do... I used to do like Atlantic City all the time. Honestly, now I'm probably going to lay low. 31 is not a very exciting <laughs> birthday this year. So I did see two pollen trips. So these are those like all-inclusive style trips that you keep seeing popping up. However, one quick comment about that before we move on. A couple of them have been canceled recently because of the Omicron. Omicron. I don't know what it's called. I literally just short wired. I don't know what it's fucking called. The variant, whatever. Oh, my God. Has anyone seen that TikTok where they're like the, the Omarion op- <laughs> the Omarion variant or something like that? I literally died. OK, ADD. Um, yeah. I just wanted to mention that because there have been some like on a serious note getting canceled, which sucks because again, like things are very, very uncertain right now and traveling internationally, you just don't know what they're going to do. You don't know what rules are going to change. Like we've seen that happen with EDC Vegas this past year. So things can happen. So I just want to mention that before you go buy tickets to anything, just like really consider what their return policies are and refunds and things like that. However, if everything ran smoothly and we were in a perfect world, they do have two events that sounded really cool. So the first one is Diplo's Higher Ground Festival happening February 17th through the 21st, which is my birthday weekend. It's in Cabo. It's all house music. Despite how you feel about Diplo, listen, he has his moments. Is he a perfect human being? No. Is he funny? Yes. Um, His higher ground label is incredible house music. I saw him play this summer. The crowd was not great at his show, but his set was really, really good. Um, And the the lineup is like pretty stacked for that. Let me see who else was playing with him. I was actually like, oh, that's interesting. Um, Eli and Fur, Kristoff and him. Mason Maynard I like. Latrell I like. Somi. Yousef. So some really great house artists. Um, The other one they were doing is called Ibiza Spirit and this one is in Cancun. This lineup is fucking insane. It's a much bigger lineup. So this the thing about this I thought was cool because I've never done Ibiza, which I would love to one day, but it's taking like all of the clubbing institutions. So like Yashwaya, I hope I didn't butch that, (laughs) Amnesia, um, I think High Ibiza, Blue Marlin, like all of these different really popular venues that are iconic in Ibiza are kind of um, a part of this. And so there's too many artists on here to count. But like Black Coffee is on here, Camel Fat, who else? David Guetta, Eats Everything, Jamie Jones, Leila Benitez, Lee Foss, Luciano, Martinez Brothers, Martin Garrix, Michael Beebe, Nicole Mudaber. Who else do we have? Salardo, Todd Terry, like really, really incredible, legendary house and techno act. So that one is on my radar for sure. And then this is, I'm not sure, it's five club takeovers. It says 50 plus artists and brands, pool and boat parties, accommodations for every budget. So again, the copy sounds really good. Hopefully they can deliver with everything, but That would be on my radar. And then the last one is called Terminal V, which I believe normally takes place in Scotland, but they're doing uh, an edition in Berlin in February. So like this is fucking prime, intense rave culture. Gonna be incredible. All techno, I believe. Is it house and techno? Techno. Um, Charlotte DeWitt is on there. Nina Kravitz. Honestly, a lot of names I don't recognize. I wouldn't even care, but that's happening February 18th through the 21st in Berlin. So that's going to be a really cool festival experience that they're bringing there. Um, All right, March. Let's dive into March. March, I actually have the most, I think. I have four festivals. March, September, and July are the ones that I have the most months for festivals in those months (laughs) okay let's dive into this hopefully I'm not coming at you with too much information but March these are the four I would write down Um, first and foremost out of all of these I would pick SXM I really wanted to do SXM this year and I'm sad I couldn't make it happen but it just wasn't in the cards however it is definitely a bucket list festival for me Um, I got to interview the founder Julian Prince on the Festival Insider podcast he's awesome SXM takes place on the Caribbean islands of St. Martin, which is half Dutch and half French. 
The festival takes place across the whole island, which is what I think is really, really cool. So there's all different types of venues spread out. There's like beach parties. There's pool parties. There's VIP villa parties. Like you are very much immersed in the island. This straight up feels like a vacation. I just went to St. Martin last year in March and it was beautiful. It was so beautiful, like crystal blue waters, beautiful weather it was so hot there's incredible food there because you have cuisines from like all these different countries um so it's just like an incredible vacation with house and techno where you're just vibing like you can't get better than that it's like a party island so it also skews a little bit on the older side I think a lot of these international events skew a little bit older because I don't know when I'm in my early 20s I wasn't really thinking about doing this type of event so I think now if you have like a bigger budget or maybe you and your husband want to go, like whatever it might be, everybody is welcome. But that is SXM. The next one I would say is Okeechobee, which is going down in early March. Another one that I was considering doing this year, but Ultra is just the way that it worked out for me this year. But Okeechobee is very high up on my list as well. This is in Florida. So this is an American festival in Sunshine Grove, Florida. It is a mixed genre festival with camping. Um, I really liked this because, well, one, every single person I talk to who mentions Okeechobee says it's like one of their favorite events and that they love the vibes and like everything is really immaculate there. Uh, I believe this is the fifth year it's happening and Insomniac Events now runs it. So at least you know when Insomniac is involved, like you're going to get great production. It's going to be a good event. Um, It's going to be well run. But it seems really pretty because they have this like lake in the middle that has like this sandy beach. Uh, And then they have all these beautiful palm trees and they have this like house stage that's like built in that area. Um, I'm doing actually a festival guide on Okeechobee with a lineup review, which I think is out already on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to check that out, I'm also selling tickets through Insomniac. I'm an Insomniac ambassador, so I will leave links for Okeechobee and EDC Las Vegas if you need down in the show notes. Thank you guys for purchasing through that. Um, But yeah, it looks amazing. The surroundings look cool. The lineup's dope because it is mixed genre so it's not just dance music like you're gonna have some other artists and live acts on there as well so that seems really really cool a uh, third event I'm gonna recommend for March is gonna be ultra I'm gonna recommend it because in general it's a staple it's a staple dance music event like it's one of the world's most iconic events it's a very well-known label you're always going to get like top of the line production. You know, the lineup is always going to be one of the most insane things you've ever seen. They book like top tier talent. They book underground artists like they have the whole resistance brand, which I'm like so fucking pumped for now because that's going to be like all of your techno um, crowd. And it is cool because now it's going back to Bayfront Park. They did like break away in 2019. They went to Virginia Key Beach. It didn't. It was OK. <laughs> now they're coming back home. Um, but I mean, here's the thing. Okay. I went in 2017. I will say like Miami is great. Miami music week, even better. You have endless amounts of fucking options for pool parties, um, after parties. Like I did both of those. The lineups for those are freaking insane. There's like conferences, like there's all these different things going on for Miami music week. So it's really cool that that's a part of it. Um, the weather was beautiful. I could still like you know, go to the pool or go to the beach during the day. And then I could go over to the festival. Um, And again, like production and the the sets I saw were iconic. However, I will say I did not like the crowd in 2017. It just like was not the vibes for us. So I'm very, very curious to report back to you guys how it is this year. Um, It is a very international event. So I'm also curious to see what happens This year, if like a lot of countries aren't letting people fly out, like I feel like that would be a different vibe as well. But that is ultra for you. It's happening March 25th to the 27th. I will say the tickets are also very expensive. Um, Just throwing that out there. Last one I would mention for March. I'm very intrigued by Crossed. So Crossed is a smaller house and techno festival in San Diego. Uh, My friend Vibe with Aid went and said it was really, really fun. Um, lineup wise, this is like house heaven. Like I think you guys would really be into it. I'm going to read it because it's not that big of a lineup. So let me see. 
Um, headliners are Sophie Tucker. We've got Gorgon City, Get Real, which is uh, Claude Von Stroke and Green Velvet. You have S.G. Lewis, Adam Bayer, Nina Kravitz, Eli Brown, Kyle Watson, Salardo, Frank Moody. So honestly, I would love to go. And this is in early March, I believe. Um, March 5th and 6th. So yeah, I think this is a little bit more of like a laid back kind of vibe festival. It's not like super ravey or anything like that, but I do think you guys would enjoy this one. So that's where we're at with March. Okay, I'm going to get into April and then we'll take a quick break after April. But April, I had a couple options for you. Honestly, I'm going to start out with Coachella, which might be surprising. Like I feel like if you go back to my beginning years of the podcast, like it took me a while to come around to Coachella. I think for a while I was just like, that's just an influencer festival and blah, blah, blah. It's not for me. And like, I think I just like, I don't know. I like just shook it off like I'm not interested. However, as I've been more involved in this scene, I do really respect what it's done for music festival culture. It's made a huge difference culturally. And I think it's an extremely relevant festival still. And it's like you are going to get mixed genres like you're going to have pop singers and you're going to have really big rappers. But then you also have like I think it's the Yuma Tent the Mojave and the Sahara, which all have dance music. I went back and looked at the lineup, the set times from 2019 and like wanted to punch myself in the face. <laughs> like It was rude. It was so fucking rude. The lineup and the set times. I was like, w- why did you not think about doing this? Like, listen, everybody has their own thing. Maybe I would leave those stages to go see like Post Malone or something. But for the most part, like I want dance music the whole weekend long. Um, and I just think it'd be cool to do a a festival in California. I've never done one and I don't know. I just think it'd be interesting to like check that one off the bucket list. The other two I'll recommend, uh, recommend, um, I'm going to throw Ubby Dubby on here. I haven't done it yet, but I do want to experience the Texas festival crowd. So I think this would be a good one because Disco Donnie presents events are run pretty well. Um, and this one seems to be growing with each year it was the first festival back in 2021 gotta give them credit for that amazing um usually has a really good lineup it definitely has a lot more bass acts but it's it's usually a mix it's all electronic which is great and it seems to be expanding like I I can see them putting effort into the expansion of this event making it bigger more stages and things like that so I'm, I'm keeping my eye on Ubby Dubby and I think it could be a fun one especially if you live locally and that's happening um April 23rd and 24th. No, I will not be going this year. (laughs) Okay, and the last one I want to recommend in April is Desert Hearts Festival uh, happening April 28th through May 2nd. Uh, This one just came on my radar this year, which like for shame, Emma, because it's the 10th anniversary of this. But Desert Hearts is a very well-known, well-loved house label. They also have techno as well. I just respect the hell out of the culture and the brand that they've created. Um, Lee Reynolds, like Mikey Lyon, all of them. It's amazing. I believe the other co-founders are Porky and Marbs as well. But I was looking into this. um, I just think they're changing the location this year. And I was talking about this on Festival Insider. That's how it came onto my radar. But it kind of gives me like Burning Man slash Dirty Bird. bird, I can't talk. Dirty Bird vibes. Like amazingly weird quirky fun funky like do whatever the fuck you want like more transformational type event lots of art lots of yoga like gives me more hippie vibes but I'm super into it so it's one stage um and again like all house and techno so I feel like the vibes at that would be really really cool and I definitely feel like as I get older 30s 40s could see myself like dabbling in desert hearts festivals so that's where we're at right now. I'm going to take a super quick break here, you guys, and I will be back with the second half of the year. Alrighty, you guys. So we're diving into May here. Can you guess what recommendations I have? <laughs> All right, we'll do this one quickly. EDC Las Vegas, of course, is going to be a recommendation. Uh, it's one of the biggest electronic dance music festivals in the world, and for good reason. It is the epitome of rave culture in the United States, and everybody needs to do it at least once in their life. It's my favorite event. It keeps getting bigger and better Um, there's over eight stages you like 200 artists like you literally take your pick there's a million one things to see every genre is represented so if you like hard dance or techno 
or house or trance. Like there's literally an entire stage for you. Um, They have the camping experience now, which I am all about. And I would definitely do camping again. So it's incredible. It's totally exhausting, but it's so worth it. But it's happening uh, May 20th through May 22nd this year. I will not be going. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm taking a break. (laughs) It was a lot. I was just there in October. We're taking a break this year. I want to do Electric Forest. So uh, I'm taking a break, but I highly recommend you guys going. You have to do it at least once in your lifetime to experience it. The other two I want to mention, I have Movement Festival in Detroit, the birthplace of techno. Uh, This is a city festival, so this is a different kind of crowd. Um, If you did ARC, it's similar. It's a cooler vibe to it for sure. I feel like it can be a little bit of an older crowd too, but this is like not very ravey. Like think a little bit more casual in your dress. Um, People going here are the hardcore into techno. Like it's all about the music. It's all about selling the cult celebrating the culture of this music like incredible lineup the artists are some of the biggest names you're ever going to see a lot of underground as well so uh, I just think it's they haven't had it the last two years unfortunately but they are said to come back this Memorial Day weekend so I'm really excited for them and I would love to attend that one year because I've never done it before so that's a big big one for me and then I also had hangout festival on here which Another one, I'm not doing it this year, but it happens, it's same weekend as EDC Vegas, so it's May 20th through the 22nd, and I believe this one is in Alabama um, on the Gulf Shores, which is really cool. I've always liked this one. I've always had it on my radar because I always think their lineup is interesting. It is mixed genre, so you have rock, you have rap, you have country, you have dance music, like you have a little bit of everything. So it is a nice mix. Plus it's like a beach festival, which sounds so cool. So it's again, hang out. It's a little bit more chill, a little bit more laid back, but it's like the perfect thing I feel like to kick off summer right around Memorial Day weekend. Um, I'll quickly tell you who's playing this year uh, because this one also took a break because of the pandemic as well. But um, Post Malone, I love Posty. You've got Fall Out Boy, Kane Brown, Zed and Marin Morris headlining. Um, As far as dance music acts that day, you have Side Piece, love them. LPGOB is playing that day, Latrell and Lucy. Saturday, you have Halsey, Doja Cat, Elenium, and Leon Bridges. And for dance music, you have Maddion, Sunburn, Shipwreck, and I think that's it. And then Sunday, you have Tame Impala, Megan Thee Stallion, Jack Harlow, Phoebe Bridges, and Louis the Child. You've also got Slander, which is crazy. Uh, who else? Vanessa is playing... I think that's all that I really know, but really good lineup. Oh, Diesel. Diesel is playing as well. So you kind of have bass thrown in there. I don't know. Super random. But guys, if you're in the area or you need something that's just like a little bit more laid back, Beach Festival, go check out Hangout Fest. Moving on to June. Now we're into like full blown summer festivals, guys. So this is what you should be thinking about. If you're like, I want something over this summer, maybe you're in college, you get a break, you can go do something. These are some fun ones you should check out. So for me, number one is Electric Forest. I've got to recommend it because it's top of my bucket list right now. And I will be attending for the first time this year. So I'm so excited about that. Um, I have just heard nothing but incredible things. Like this to me is like the epitome of a magical experience. I cannot wait to be a part of the forest fam and to camp like I love that they offer an extended camping experience we are going on Wednesday we're doing group camping I just love that the stages are built like in the forest in Michigan it looks magical at night like this is the feeling I had before I attended like EDC for the first time I'm sure you guys can relate like I just can't wait to be there in the forest like watching the stage in the middle of a crowd with like They have all these amazing performers and crazy like experiences built into things like it's very otherworldly and I can't wait to see the community around it. I can't wait to hang out like in the hangar and all the different areas and do all the fun activities that they have. Just hang around camp, enjoy summer. It's going to be a great fucking time. So um, I also like the lineup as well. I have to touch on that. Like it's not just electronic music. There are jam bands. um, There's rock. There's all different kinds of dance there's bass like it's a it's a mix so I'm very intrigued by that as well I feel like these will be very special sets um 
The next one I want to mention is Day Trip LA, which was new last year. This one is obviously on my radar because I am a fucking house head and I almost threw up when I saw the lineup last year. It was so stupid good. Um, oh, did I have this in the wrong month? Hold on. Sorry. It was July last year. OK, I don't know if it's in June or July. They, I don't think they've announced the dates yet. So I'm going to keep it in June. Let me just check. It just says it returns in 2022. OK, it was July 3rd and 4th last year, so I could be wrong. I'm just going to keep it in June and we're just going to keep talking about it. But anyway, it's a house music festival. The lineup last year was insane. This is an insomniac event event. I believe it was at the Nas Center. Yeah, last year. It was like a whole fucking thing, if you guys remember. I mean, that was prime COVID as well. It was supposed to be at another location like on the water and then they moved it to the Nas Center. So it was like a little bit of drama with it last year, but um, it looked really fun. I heard the vibes were really good. People were saying, obviously, because it's all house music, you have to really be into the genre and really like that. So it looked like good vibes and a good summer festival. The last one I will mention is Junction 2, which happens in London. So this is this I would want to go to because I've never experienced uh, raving in the UK. And it's like its own wild culture there. Like they know what the fuck they're doing. And Junction 2 is a really incredible techno and electronic festival. Like the lineup is fucking insane. Let me click on this. Um, Hopefully everything like fingers crossed goes well with the event because they've also had a lot of issues in the UK with COVID. Um, But really quickly, there's just something special about the culture in the UK that I want to experience. And the stages look very cool. Like there's this one stage. I don't know how to describe it, but I've seen so many videos of artists playing this stage. So it's just like an iconic location. Um, It's happening June 3rd and 4th like I said, in London, but it's like under this bridge or something like that. I don't know. It looks really, really cool. Have they announced their lineup? Oh yeah, here it is. So let me just run through some of the headliners. Again, it's like all techno, but I don't even recognize half the names to be honest. Adam Bayer, Amelie Lenz are on here. Anna or Anna. We have Mind Against. Richie Houghton is on here. Seth Troxler. We have the guy who's like 99999, Tasha, Willow, um, Carlotta, Effie, Nina Kravitz is on here, Peach. I really don't know a lot of these names, <laughs> but that's the fucking part, fun part of it. I would really want to go discover some new stuff. Um, there's plenty to do. We just did a whole festival guide on Gray Area, grayarea.co. Um, go check it out. We have an event recommendation on Junction 2, and we also have an activities list of things to do while you're in London for the event. So like that would just be so fucking cool to go to London and then go to a music festival. Like You can't go wrong with it. So Junction 2, put that on your radar for June. Oh my God, I need to go faster. I'm going to be here forever. Okay, July, I have four options for you. So quickly, we have Tomorrowland. There's not much to say. I feel like a lot of people know about it at this point. It's like the biggest dance music festival in the world. It takes place over two weekends, uh, usually at the very end of July. It's over 16 stages. This is like the this is the Super Bowl. Like this is the biggest dance music event. Um, Huge international festival. You are going to have every kind of dance music subgenre under the sun. production is insane everything from the ticket box you get to you don't even pay with money you pay with pearls it's like their own currency they come up with they have like a restaurant on site multiple they have a full-blown camping experience called dreamville they do an opening ceremony on thursday night and then the event is friday saturday and sunday but it looks absolutely insane i would just love to be surrounded by like so many different cultures and people and it'd be incredible so Tomorrowland is like top of the bucket list. I'm throwing on here the Above and Beyond Weekender because one, Above and Beyond. (laughs) Um, But I really love that they do this event, especially for like all the group therapy fans and fans of Above and Beyond and all the trans fam. Like it's really, really incredible. And they're doing it at the Gorge, which could not be a more beautiful location that I'm dying to go to. It's happening July 23rd and 24th and pre-sale I believe is opening on January 19th if you guys want tickets. But um, if you want all the trans feels, incredible camping experience, definitely check out the Above and Beyond Weekender that's going down. Last two I'll mention, um, Hideout Festival is on my radar. It's in Croatia. 
there's gonna be a couple Croatian festivals I'm talking about here because the beach the sun perfect summer event can't go wrong this one's happening July 3rd through the 7th it's a five-day beachside festival pool parties boat parties house and techno can't go fucking wrong look at photos of it it's absolutely gorgeous and then the last one I will recommend is Shambhala Shambhala not sure <laughs> uh we don't it's been postponed unfortunately so hopefully it will be back this year it's at the end of July this one to me gives me electric forest vibes as well but even more so so like even more like out there even more like wook vibes to me it's like an arts and camping festival um tons of music again a little bit of a mixed genre scene a lot of bass music um definitely seems more like chill laid back like again it's a camping atmosphere um very immersed in nature again I think there's six different stages that you can explore there are live acts um and one thing I think is really cool is they're very big on harm reduction reduction there so I've watched some videos about it and I believe they have like um sober camping options and things like that but they're very big on like having you know people being able to test their drugs on site and things like that so there are different um communities that offer that like similar to dance is safe so we give a lot of credit to Shabala for doing that all right last few here guys august for august i i'll start out with the smallest event i'm gonna recommend dos energy i've never done it but from what i've heard like i think if you're local this would be a good one i don't think at this point in my life i'd ever travel to dos energy anymore because it is on the smaller side and production like isn't anything super crazy but i've heard like a lot of people who have grown up or if like that's like your local festival i've heard people really really love it the location does look really beautiful it's in um salt lake city um the lineup's usually pretty good but i believe it's only a two-day festival so i feel like they have to rely heavily on a really good like lineup to get people there but it does seem cool and for a smaller scale festival in august i think this one you could you know add it to your radar if you're in the area and then the other two I would mention, um, Creamfields, I'm going to throw out there again, another, this is probably one of the biggest electronic dance music events in the UK, uh, definitely large scale for them, crazy good production. The main stage with like the massive LED screens is so good. I've watched so many sets from that stage for Creamfields. Um, it is a camping festival. I have heard mixed reviews of this event, I will say. I've heard mixed things. I've heard people just like really get fucked up and party like super hard, like drugs are heavily present there. I've also heard if it rains that the camping is like a shit show and it gets super muddy. So those might be some cons, but on the flip side, like some of the most iconic performances happen there. Like it's massive for house and techno. You're going to get so many special performances. Like usually Eric Prids will bring like his hollow show there. So you'll get like really, really, really good production. So if you need a really good EDM festival in the UK, I would recommend Creamfields. And then lastly, I am dying to go to defected Croatia. Ugh, I don't know if this is anybody's gone. If you have, shoot me a DM. But Defected Croatia was on my radar within this last like year and a half. Again, as I'm like expanding my horizons outside, I just need to go to Croatia. It looks like the most fucking beautiful country I've ever seen. Like Game of Thrones was shot there. It's beautiful beaches, like perfect summer vacation vibes, like absolutely gorgeous. Um, the Easily one of the best house lineups I've ever scene um insanely beautiful setting like i said it just seems like from all the videos i've watched it seems like very fun very freeing like people are there to party and have a great fucking time um it's three different stages they also do a ton of boat parties and there's a disco tech as well check out their website and check out some of their youtube videos they call it the six days of house hedon hedonism uh so you know it's gonna be fucking wild and then this year we've got, oh my God, A-Track, Bob Sinclair, Boys Noise. I'm going to point out Derek Carter, Eats Everything, Ferric Dawn, Floor Plan, Gorgon City, Harry Romero, Honey Dijon, uh, John Summit, Louis Vega, Melee. Ooh, who else do we have on here? 
Tasha vintage culture shapeshifters like fucking stacked. The beach stage looks so cool. Their like little olive grove stage looks awesome. So I feel like that would just be a fucking house party. So we're all about defected Croatia. All right, moving on to September. This is the last one that I have a lot of recommendations for you because there's a ton to pick from. September is a really good festival month. Labor Day is absolutely stacked. This is scratching the surface of the options you have for Labor Day. So again, go go for what, I don't know, feels good. Like go for what's in your budget. Go for the lineup that feels good to you. Maybe explore a new city. Maybe you want to travel because you have an extra day off of work. Like expand your horizons a little bit don't do the same thing every single year that's good I've done that but like try something new I would highly recommend it there's so many options September is good as well because I feel like the weather for the most part in the United States is still like really beautiful like up here in the northeast still can be really really hot which is nice it's still gonna be hot like on the west coast and in Florida and all those places so my two recommendations for Labor Day weekend my number one is gonna be ARC I did it for the first time this past year. I'm going back hands down. It's in Chicago. It is a house and techno festival with one of the most stacked lineups I've ever seen in my life. They are expanding it to three days this year, which is amazing. Incredible after parties all over the city of Chicago, which is the birthplace of house music. Like you cannot go wrong. The people who ran this festival too, like have been in the Chicago scene for like years and years and years. So they really know what the fuck they're doing with curating a lineup and putting together the production. Like there were some minor things I would tweak, but for the first year, like they had the Elro branded stage, which was fucking incredible. Like can't go wrong. Um, I'm going to throw Electric Zoo on here if you've never done it. Uh, it's a New York City festival festival. Cool crowd, always a good vibe. Like production's pretty good for the most part. Lineup is always insane. Really, really good after parties over at like the Brooklyn Mirage and Avant Gardner. I've always had a good time. I've done it at least, I think I've done it three times, if not four times, because this is my local festival. So usually I would never miss it, but ARC has just stolen my heart away. I will say the thing about Izu is they've had, like, I don't think they've stepped up, up their production enough Like they kind of keep the same layout every year and there's really, really bad sound bleed. So I feel like they need to do something like bigger and crazier to like draw people in and keep people coming back. Like they got to mix it up a little bit. You know what I mean? So I want to see Izu step it up a little bit. The other two I would recommend, um, I'm going to throw out Nocturnal Wonderland, which is an insomniac event, one of the longest running insomniac, if not the longest. So it still has that like OG raver vibe to it. Um, I love the theming around it and I've heard really good things. It always seems to get great reviews and people love it. Uh, And it's got a great camping experience as well. And that's in mid-September. And lastly, for all my base heads out there, I'm going to mention it. Will I ever go? No. But will I mention it for you? Yes. I got to recommend Lost Lands simply because it's like the mecca for all base heads and Excisions teams done an incredible fucking job running this. Um, I've heard it's an amazing camping experience. They are growing it every year, lineup wise, stage wise, production wise. Like I've heard the stages are massive. So they did expand their lineup last year too. I will say they had a bunch of house artists on there, which were at a separate stage from, according to my friend, B.B. Howell. So honestly, I think it's really intriguing. They're giving a light to a bunch of different subgenres of bass music, And the production looks good. And I've heard the vibes are immaculate. So if you like bass music, you have to go. Like you have to, have to, have to go. Last three months, you guys. We're almost through it. I'm going to go through October. I don't have that many left here. I only have two recommendations for October and November. October, I'm going to recommend ADE, which is the Amsterdam dance event. It's technically a conference. It's like the biggest dance music industry conference uh, that happens obviously in Amsterdam every October. It's usually like the first or second week, but um, it's a massive conference. So you're going to have tons of events, speakers, workshops, shows, like obviously the amount of dance music artists that are Dutch is insane, but you're going to have really, really crazy special events there. Um, A lot of the brands like Awakenings, like all the amazing brands you know and love from uh, the Netherlands do shows there so as a person who works in this industry I know I need to attend ADE one year and I really really want to um, because I've never been to Amsterdam as well so I would definitely be doing that the other one I recommend is Escape 
simply because for the Halloween festivals, I feel like it's still has the edge on some of the other events. Um, This is at the Nas Center in San Bernardino. This is an Insomniac's premiere um, Halloween festival. Really fun decorations. Like they obviously go all out with the performers and the stages, production, like all of that stuff. So you get fully dressed up in your Halloween costumes. You go do your damn thing. Lineup is always really good as well. Uh, I just have heard things about the crowd being kind of like meh because it draws in like a lot of younger like party kind of crowd who is just going to like going because it's Halloween and they're going to get fucked up. So I don't know at this point in my life, I feel like that ship has sailed for me personally to fly out there from New Jersey. I don't know if I'd go for a two day event, but I do think it still seems like very much worth it, especially if you guys are like in the area. Okay. November. I only have two recommendations for November personally. Um, Hands down EDC Orlando number one. Um, It's the second weekend of November. Used to be a two-day festival. Is now a three-day festival. It's a top-tier festival for me. I had the best experience this year. Insomniac just keeps like topping it as far as like production was really incredible. They brought the full-scale neon garden like mega structure this year which I was so freaking happy about you've got like a mix of genres and the stages are huge but it's still an easy festival to navigate because it's not as big as EDC Vegas the vibes were perfect it's pretty easy to get to for the most part which is really nice and it ends at like I think it ends at 11 or no, it ends at midnight. So if you want to go home, you can go home and get a great night's rest. If not, you can go to an after party. Like it's just plenty of options. And the weather was really beautiful in Florida around that time. So definitely recommend EDC Orlando. Um, I do want to try out Seismic Dance Event in Austin at some point. It's a smaller scale um, house and techno festival, primarily techno. But uh, they've definitely been like growing the brand these last few years. And the lineup was amazing amazing if it wasn't the same weekend as EDC Orlando I would have been there but it's kind of hard they're the same weekend so unfortunately for me I'm always probably going to pick EDC Orlando but maybe every now and then I'll mix it up and do seismic Um, they have a cool VIP experience if you want any information on side seismic I direct you over to my friend vibe with aids channel because she lives in Austin and she's done that one a bunch of times last but certainly not least December December was a little difficult for me. I honestly, I need to do more research to see like internationally if there's more events in December. There's a lot that like start New Year's Eve and go into January. So I didn't really count those. But if I were to do a New Year's Eve event, I think I would I would lean towards either Decadence Arizona or Decadence Colorado personally. Um, although you have like Countdown and you have a bunch of other events as well. I just feel like the lineups are really, really incredible for those two. And I want to experience a festival in Arizona or Colorado as well. Um, I say Colorado because a couple of my friends just went and had like the best time and really, really enjoyed it. So that's why it's like on my radar right now. But um, honestly, I would probably be sending it mainly for the lineup because the lineup is always like incredible so it is a little bit on the smaller scale it's tented stages for Arizona I believe so it's nothing like super crazy like high production value but I feel like it'd be a really good time and you would bring the good vibes so that is everything guys that is 12 months of festivals to choose from what I would personally recommend putting on your list. I'm going to take a super quick break here and then we will wrap things up with some EDM news. All right, you guys. So here we have a we got a lot of news. So I'm going to run through this really quickly. Um, first and foremost, Beyond Wonderland dropped their lineup uh, a couple days ago. So incredibly stacked as per usual. It's going to be back in March. Uh, I think it was in June this past year because of COVID, but it's back in March when it normally is at the Nas Center. Um, incredible mix of artists. You've got some Anjuna on there, um, all kinds of house. You've got the Ophelia label takeover. So in the really nice mix. Tickets are officially on sale for that. Again, any Insomniac events tickets that I have, I will link them down below in the show notes. But thank you guys for supporting me it directly supports me and my channel and everything like that when you guys buy through me. So thank you for doing that. Um, 
there was a charity event I wanted to mention. Uh, it's going to be benefiting, I believe, it's through Insomniac and Say My Name. It's called One Beat. It's benefiting the Local Hearts Foundation, um, Axe Black Jesus, Back to Back Mad Girl, Dak Daniels, Back to Back Gum, uh, et cetera, et cetera, J Moss, Azadi, and it's happening February 4th, 2022 at, I think it's in LA, at Exchange LA. So that's really, really cool. You can buy tickets on Eventbrite. Um, Sunset Music Festival is officially announced, so it is happening this year, May 27th through the 29th, um, and that is over in Tampa, Florida. This is a Disco Donnie run event. Um, very good vibes. I always hear it's super fucking hot at this festival, but usually really, really cool stacked lineup. So that is out. Um, with their upcoming tour coming up, Chami and AC Slater have announced the Confessions Times Night Base album which is dropping which is so cool so all the artists that are going on tour with them um it's dropping this friday it's bijou blossom uh brandon i think posi habstract martin horger mysteria nostalgic shift key and taiki new light with chami and ac slater i will be fucking listening to that on repeat all of the bass house and g house vibes you need um lost land speaking of them earlier officially announced that it will be back september 23rd through the 25th and tickets are on sale january 21st and then lastly we had a major festival cancellation which i want to talk about really quickly here so departure festival i've been talking about this for a while it was a brand new event brought to you by pollen city fox and their brooklyn mirage reputable brands there city fox and brooklyn mirage are massive um, venues here in new york this has been planned for a really long time it was happening in playa del carmen mexico it was supposed to kick off on the 6th and it was going through the 11th one of the most insane lineups i've seen for the year like absolutely incredible house and techno lineup massive massive names so things were a little weird on Tuesday which is when the event was supposed to take place I know friends who like flew out there for the event like these are four and five star hotels like very very nice accommodations they announced on Tuesday the day of the event they posted on Instagram due to local changes in COVID-19 permitting since this morning we must announce that today's opening of departure has been postponed until tomorrow Friday January 7th sorry this is a Thursday all ticket holders, all single day ticket holders will receive a refund within 30 days. Uh, we are heartbroken to announce this. This remains, excuse me, out of our control. So that happened. Obviously, people like flip the fuck out because it's just hard with COVID because you don't know when things are going to change or like what is affecting what and you don't know what is, you just don't know what's happening. So I know people were really frustrated because they were there and like ready to go and got that message. So we already knew there was trouble in the waters. And then the next morning on the 7th on Friday, um, I think it was like pretty quiet for a while. And then they did do a post announcing the entire festival was canceled. So they said it is with an incredibly heavy heart that on the weekend of our show, after 10 days of building and months of planning, we have been instructed that we cannot operate departure We've been liaising with local authorities from Playa del Carmen and with the recent severe rise in cases of Omicron in the past few days, the governor announced last night that Playa del Carmen is returning to yellow tier COVID restrictions and therefore we cannot continue with a show this size as planned. People are getting fully refunded. They're getting a $200 credit towards a future pollen experience. They could still stay in their hotel so nobody was getting kicked out. I saw a lot of people like, writing fire fest like this is fire fest blah, blah blah like those comments to me are so fucking ridiculous like these people are in four and five star hotels the stages were built there are photos of the stages like it's not like that at all the other person running it was a scam artist in fire festival so like it's not a fire festival let's not be fucking dramatic here like shit is going on we're still in the middle of a pandemic um don't know what happened behind the scenes but who fucking knows? And it's really, really unfortunate. From what I've been seeing, I've been following EDM Maniacs page because they have been posting like in real time what it's like because they are there. They went for departure. So I really appreciate their updates. So I'll just read those to you. This is as of Saturday the 8th. Um, EDM Maniac had posted that there was still tons of music everywhere. DJs are doing pop-up surprise sets at host hotels Tulum events are still in full swing, so there are a lot of people going back and forth. 
They said most people seem to be making the best of it. The weather is great. So obviously silver lining here. Nobody was kicked out of their hotels, um, even though a lot of the hotels will be refunding people. However, they wrote the new COVID measures in the region don't start until Monday. So the festival could have happened Thursday through Sunday. So that is leaving a bad taste with a lot of people. So I'm not sure what happened there, like what the actual rules were, but you know, I'm sure people will know better. And then they've been posting like pop up parties for people. So the I was very happy to read that because I was at least like at least I know that the people like friends and acquaintances I know who are there are hopefully making the most of the experience and still get to enjoy a really nice vacation and things like that. So fingers crossed. I know other events have been canceled because of the rises in cases, but knock on wood, I think it's going to be like international events are a little tricky right now but hopefully in the United States it's still like a state-by-state case basis so I think we'll be in the clear hopefully um but yeah guys please be safe out there take care of yourselves um if you enjoyed this last but certainly not least it would mean the world to me I work super hard in these episodes I put them out for free if you guys love them please tell somebody about them Come join our community at Rave Culture Cast on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. We have an amazing Facebook group community that we're almost at 800 members, which is fucking nuts. Uh, We have Discord, all that good stuff. So uh, you guys will always be the first to know about like upcoming merch launches or Zoom parties, like all that good stuff. Um, So please share a link with somebody today or make this your Instagram story. It means the absolute world to me. So thank you guys for doing that. Again, if you want tickets to any of these Insomniac shows, I'm selling um, through my Insomniac affiliate link for a few of them. So click below in the show notes to grab your tickets to Oki, EDC Vegas. I believe I'm going to have Beyond Wonderland as well. Um, So yeah, check that out down below. And other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Leave me some comments. And I hope you guys have an incredible weekend. I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye, guys. We'll be right back.